One. Today I got a Razer Blade 15 gaming laptop. I'm gonna do some big time upgrading on it and cloning. I'll show you how I do it. Hey guys, how's it going? Dale here. Today I got a Razer Blade 15 gaming laptop. A customer shipped it up to me from Louisville, Kentucky. Wants me to do some upgrading on it for him, which I'll do. Um, it's a uh, running the 10th generation Core i7 10750 6 core processor. It does have the RTX 26 gaming graphics in it. It currently has 16 gigs of DDR4 2933 memory and a 512 gigabyte SSD NVMe drive. Um, so I'm going to upgrade the RAM. going to put in a 32 gigabyte kit of some HyperX RAM here. Really good RAM. I use it a lot among others. But I'm um, going to put in two 16s, get them up to 32. And we're going to upgrade his NVMe drive with a Western Digital Black SN750 drive. It's a one terabyte. These are pretty fast drives, very close to the Samsung 970s. Um, but I use them a lot. And it's a very, very good high performance drive. So we're going to add that. But I'm going to clone his exi existing drive under the new one terabyte. So I'm going to get right into it here. And what I use to clone with, for this demonstration, I'm going to use an enclosure. It's a USB to M.2 NVMe. Comes with a A cable and a C cable. So you can do it either A or C, USB. Uh, but it's toolless. You just put the little lever here and mount the drive in here. Super easy. This is a new one. It's bare. As soon as I get a hold of it here. And there's a little rubber grommet here. You just kind of pinch it over and it holds it right in place. Probably don't even need to put the cover on to do the clone, but we will. So I'm just going to plug it in. And the cloning software that I'm going to use for this demonstration is the free Acronis True Image that you can download right from Western Digital's website. I'll have a link down below where you can get it. It's totally free. It works only with Western Digital Drives. Crucial has their own crucial version of this as well. So I'm just going to double click it. I've already installed it on this laptop ahead of time. I didn't want to bore you with that. Just download it and install it. Takes a few minutes to install. <clears throat> Once I get the clone done, we're going to open it up, put in the new drive and the new memory and this computer will be a whole lot better. And once it opens, we're simply going to go up here and click on clone disk. Some of this stuff is kind of nice. You can do other stuff, but I'm going to worry about cloning right now. Now inside this unit, <clears throat> there are two, two slots, two M.2 slots. Now when this comes up, you got automatic or manual. Automatic works 99% of the time. Manual will allow you to have more control over your partition sizes. But we're going to hit next. And this is his source drive right here, the 512, showing you how it's laid out. It's, he's get, got a little over half full there. We're going to hit next. These razor blades are very tough the way they're built. They're not bad at all. It's got an RGB keyboard. It's got 144 hertz IPS display. So here's our, our target drives right here. Is our one terabyte showing up. We're going to select it. We're simply going to hit next. I'll have all the information on the screen, the specs and model number of this particular unit for you to see. And the clone shouldn't take too long. He does have a lot of stuff on here, some games and other things. So here's, here's our layout, the automatic resized everything proportionally to fit onto the new one terabyte. So we're going to click on proceed. I'm going to let this get started, then when it's just about done or right at the end, I'll come back. I'm not going to just sit here and bore you watching it. We do a lot of cloning here. Um, when I do these videos, I like to do these different methods just to show you how to do it if you're doing it at home. And you don't have, you know, set up like we do. We have little cloning station over there. We do a lot of cloning, a lot of different ways. Each job is different depending on what windows they have and what stuff they have on there and so forth. 
But when this is cloning, you don't really want to be doing anything on the computer. You just want to let it sit, finish, don't open any programs or run any games or anything like that. So it started, so I'm going to let this get going here, guys, and I'll come back when it's right at the end, all right? All right, guys, we just finished cloning here. Just finished, and this pops up. says that we had a good clone. We're going to turn off our computer, like it says, to put in the new parts. So let me do a shutdown here. Now we can unplug this drive. I'm going to remove it from the enclosure, which is nice and warm. Very warm, actually. Take out our freshly cloned... Western Digital SN750. But yeah, these enclosures are, are pretty handy. Like I said, when, when you're all, all said and done, you could, could put your old drive in here as an external drive. Uh, it runs off the USB-C to A, and here's the cable C to C, if you want to do it that way. Very versatile. All right, make sure we're all shut down here, <clears throat> which we are. Now, I've already taken out pretty much all the screws except these two. Um, didn't want to bore you with that. The um, these screws, though, use a, a Torx. They're not Phillips. They're very small. They're easy to strip. So, guys, make sure you have a good quality Torx tip. It's a, it's a T5 or a number 5 Torx bit, okay? So, I'm going to remove these last two remaining screws. They're very short. They come out quite easy. But if you have a really crappy Torx bit and the screws are torqued and they're good from the fact, factory and you strip the head out, eh, it's not a pain to get them out after that so be careful and I always like to lay my screws out on a little magnetic pad like this you can organize them if they're different lengths and stuff but you can see they stick right to the pad so you're not bumping them and knocking them on the floor and wondering where your screw went so these all went up really easy I'm gonna just grab my spudger here and it should lift right up just like that okay before I do anything though, I am going to disconnect our battery. The connection is right here where the battery connects to the main board. So I'm going to pull that out. In case you drop a screw or a screwdriver in there, you don't want to brick your board. But as an added precaution, oops, wrong way Dale. I'm going to open the lid and I'm going to hit my power button a couple of times. Just be careful when your bottom side is open there. That should be good. All right, so here's our two RAM slots. We got two eights in there right now, eight gigabyte DDR4. Here's our NVMe drive over in the PCI Express slot, and here's our second slot right next to it. Now, this second slot is a combo slot. It's even marked right on the board. It'll take PCI Express M.2 or SATA M.2 drive if you're just adding more storage or something like that. But in this case, I'm going to put our new Western Digital Black drive here. I'm going to move this drive over here to give him, so he can still utilize that 512 gigabytes of storage on that drive. So we got our battery <coughs> disconnected there. Uh, before I do that, I'm going to pop in the new RAM and take these out. These, you just spread the little clips out and they generally pop right up. Uh, and here's our HyperX DDR4 I'm going to put in there, two 16 gig sticks. Make sure they clip in good. Every motherboard is different. Sometimes the clips aren't the greatest. You just got to make sure they're seated in there so they don't jar loose. And that they're in the slot all the way. Just like that. All right, so we're good to go. We got 32 gigs of DDR4 2933. And I'm going to remove the screw for our M.2 drive. Yeah, I know I talk a lot. Sorry. If <laughs> people leave comments, you talk too much. So I'm going to move this drive over into this slot, and it comes with a mounting screw right here. Even though your battery is disconnected, guys, be careful what you touch in here. I'm going to put this over here in our combo slot. It'll read both SATA and PCI Express. So that's good. Oop, get a hold of my screw here. Should have a good clone. Drive, new drive I'm putting in is definitely faster than what they put in there. It's a Solid State Storage Technology Corporation. Hmm. Some OEM. So I'm going to put our new drive over here. Now, you, if you're wondering about thermal protection, these drives, they're Western Digitals. They don't really have anything on the back side, but the label itself here actually acts as a heat dissipator. It spreads the heat out. But I'll show you here in a second on the 
bottom cover that I took off. Razor did a good job putting some heat pads for both these slots right here on the cover. These two here, it's going to go on oops, like this. These two pads line up perfectly right on top of these drives, these heat pads. I got one here. They got, they got several over here for these different areas that they get kind of toasty, especially when you're gaming. So we don't need to worry about putting heat pads on these because they're already here and they're quite thick as well. But they line up perfectly. All right, so we got a, our drive swapped around. We got a new one terabyte, our new RAM. We're going to hook our battery back up. And I don't know if I mentioned it already, guys, but when you're doing a project like this, like this, make sure you're protected against static discharge. Very important before you even start. Use an anti-static mat like this, um, or a wristband or something, a wood table. Just make sure you don't zap anything. So make sure that battery's in the way. Kind of hard to tell sometimes, but it looks like it is. All right, I think we're good. So I'll put our cover back on here. We, I think we're good. I'm going to put two screws in here just to hold it on. I'm going to button it up permanently once I know everything's good. Yeah, these couldn't be any easier to open, really, other than the torque screws. I might get back in there. Using good quality tools for these screws is real important, guys. You just got to have a good tip for these screws. I know I keep mentioning that, but been there, done that. All right, so we're secure. I'm going to flip it back over. I will go into the BIOS real quick. I'm going to hit the delete key as soon as I turn it on. Um, it'll probably take a minute for it to read the new memory. That's totally normal. So it's going to do some memory training, I call it. I'm going to turn it on. I'm just going to start hitting the delete key, but don't panic if it doesn't post right away. It's totally normal. All right, we're in the BIOS, so I'm going to use, I'm going to arrow over here to where it says boot. <clears throat> and you can see on our, um, Boot option one, boot option two, we want our Western Digital NVMe drive right here for boot option one. So I'm going to go, oop, that, my bad. Go to boot option one, I'll hit enter. I'm going to choose the Western Digital drive as the first boot option. So we're good there. I'm not worried about that because I'm going to end up formatting that drive once I know we're good. So I'm going to go to save and exit. So we're save changes and reset. Yes. Every model is different. When you do these clones, sometimes you don't even have to do that. It'll just automatically do it. But it's not uncommon to go into the BIOS and have to change the boot orders. If, you, if you're still, if you got two drives with Windows installed, Boot Manager gets a little confused sometimes. So we should be booting off our new one terabyte SSD. Sorry guys, typed in the wrong password. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah, it'd be a nice upgrade for them. So we're back in Windows. Let's go check and see where we're at with our drive situation here. Wait for all this gaming stuff to load up. So here we did, here's our C drive. That's our new Western Digital drive. You can see they got the same label that's no big deal you can change those labels to whatever you want you just simply right click on it and hit rename boom but i'm not going to do that so here's his old drive still it's got everything on it just like it was everything's good on here so we're going to go over here and i'm going to right click on his old 512 there i'm going to click on format here i'm just going to do a quick format as soon as this stuff stops loading here and i'm going to hit start 
yes, I'm sure I want to format it. That's all right if it's in use. Format complete, boom. There, now it's an empty drive. Okay, so he's got 1.5 terabytes of overall storage. If we go down here and open up Task Manager, click on Performance, go to Memory, and you can see we got 32 gigabytes of overall memory at 2933. So that, that was a nice quick clone and upgrade for him. It should work great. Um, if you liked the video, give me a like. If you loved it, give me a sub. Check out some more of my videos or my playlist on my landing page there, guys. I appreciate you watching. I'll have a great day.